it reminds me of when I was younger, you know? When I was younger, my parents would always nag me. I'd be like, God, get out of my room. And they'd be like, you're 25, get a job. <laughs> okay, well, fuck my life. <laughs> but I can tell I'm getting old and cantankerous. Because I swear it's like every day I see someone, I'm like, God, I wish you would just die. I really gotta stop looking in the mirror. <laughs> I remember when I was younger, though, like, whenever I'd swear, my mom would put palm olive in my mouth, and I got used to the taste. But if I had known that my life was going to turn out like this, I probably would have tried a lot harder for the Tide Pods. <laughs> <laughs> topical. Thank you, thank you. It's a topic. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I started drinking recently, and uh, people told me people told me that uh, I had a drinking problem, but I didn't really understand it. I never had a problem drinking. It was waking up and next morning there was a problem. People text me, tell me what I did, and like that. So I, um, I I drink drink a lot of Arizona tea to make up for it, and I found out recently that uh, Arizona tea contains trace amounts of urine in it, which is great for my fetish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I know I said I started drinking recently, but I also quit drinking recently. I decided I should sober up before I got here. It's a long drive. Don't ever drink and drive, people. Please don't drink and drive. I did it once, and I re I, I was drinking, and I thought it'd be a good idea to drive home. Then I realized it was a bad idea, so I decided I'd let Jesus take the wheel. Turns out, he was more drunk than I was. <laughs> that fucker drove me right into a ditch. I guess that's what I get for trusting the guy that turns water into wine, right? <laughs> and that's it, that's it for me. I know you enjoyed it so much, I warmed you up. We have a very funny comedian. I just saw him last night at Labyrinth, and he's great. He's a very funny guy. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Dan Davis. Any uh, bad parents in the house? Any awful, shitty parents anywhere? No? Okay, I'm the only one. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, my name's Dan. I do smart comedy, much in the way that people drink smart water. Um, and I got married around age 22, so my, my daughter is actually a future child of divorce. Uh, I mean, we don't, we don't really be planned, but, you know, statistically. Um, yeah, I I, uh, I get I get angry about dad stuff now, and it's weird. I'm kind of the first person in my friend group to uh, to have a kid, and I feel like I, I had a I had a um, person in my grade who he came into our grade around seventh grade when we were starting to learn Spanish, and he already knew Spanish, so he would insist I don't need to take it, I speak it. Hola, mi amor. He didn't. I didn't know. I was like, ooh, your accent. Ooh. He's getting, getting anxious. And as it turns out, he just failed the grade and like he'd already taken the Spanish class. <laughs> so I think that's about what my parenting skills are going to amount to in like another three years or so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get, I get angry about weird dad things. Like, I get angry when people say that raising a kid is like having a pet. Now, understand that no one has ever said this to me. This isn't like a thing that people come up, hey Dan, I think that uh, that thing that you do, that you that you devote so much time to, it's actually pretty effortless. And no one's ever like been that awful to my face. But uh, what has happened is I've read about people saying it online. So I think I'm pretty justified. I think it works out. So having a kid is like having a pet in the same way that riding a bicycle is like riding a tricycle. Because one thing, once you learn to do it, you never really forget. And the other thing, you never really have to learn at all. It's pretty great. You know, you know how easy riding a tricycle is? Kids are doing it before they're able to like form memories. <laughs> it, it, like, it's so easy to form memories, watch. 
Watch, let me give you a bit of an example. I want you to all just think about your breathing. You're now conscious of your breathing, all right? Now some of you are like, am I still high? <laughs> Same, okay, good. Now, for comparison, mark the differences. Stop remembering. You can't do it, it's not possible. You can't just stop remembering or stop the feedback, apparently. <laughs> you can't just do it. It is such an easy thing to do that you cannot do it. And before kids are able to master this apparently effortless skill, they're riding tricycles. And you know what else they're doing? They're having pets. They're having puppies and gold. Do you, do you remember the goldfish that your mother bought you in the first grade that you killed? No, you don't remember. That's the point. That's what I'm saying. Uh, all, the, all, the, all adults are just dirty goddamn liars. That's all I'm saying. Um, uh, my, my daughter just went through her first, her first holiday season where she really understood the whole you know, Santa thing. And when she was younger, my wife and I said, you know, I don't really like the idea of lying to our, our, our daughter, our precious little thing. We were like, we were like 19 and liberal and just like deep down in our hearts. We're like, I don't like the idea of lying. I don't want to lie. And it, it kind of compromised to, well, I don't want her to, to be the pariah in the group either who was telling all their kids, like, you know, you know, or whatever. So she said, if she believes, she believes. If she doesn't, she doesn't. It's all right. And as it turned out, she really could have used some offense to that defense, because my family's like, okay, so here's the deal. If you don't go to bed tonight, Santa's not gonna come, and he's gonna take away all your presents, and he's gonna get all your fault, and you're gonna, it's like, no, please, I need to, she's sleeping in bed, like all tense. I need to go to sleep, do it. <sighs> I think I'm gonna hang on back here. <laughs> Yeah, so it's 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 just kind of a it's kind of a horrific thing to tell a kid that they're not gonna get gifts. Not because she's sad. I don't care if she's sad. Um, you know, like her her happiness is just so cheap. She got she got excited about a battery on the floor the other day, and it was dead. She did not care. But the real tragedy in not giving a child their hard-earned Christmas gifts is all the goddamn money it wastes. I don't, we, don't, we, don't buy, we don't buy presents for my daughter to see her happy little face. We buy presents for my daughter because my parents think that Christmas is an arms race and they're the Soviet Union and they're winning. It's insanity. Right? Yeah. Oh dear. I've forgotten my set and broken character all at once. <laughs> Alright, so... I don't, I don't think that we should actually be telling kids about Santa until we can collectively calm the hell down about the idea of people coming into our houses and taking our kids. The ideas just don't mesh up together, alright? And it's a bit of a moral panic. I don't know. Paul, please. Alright. Yeah, it's a bit of it's a bit of a moral panic. It's 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 kinda nuts. Um it's not that pedophiles are awful, it's that statistically no one's taking your kid. It's not gonna happen. Like it's kinda it's a pretty messed up mentality. It's it's like we used to I don't know I don't know how old you guys are because I don't see age. But uh there was a point in history where we were not too kind to gay men. As as straight men, we're not kind to gay men. It was awful. You're like, you wanna fuck, bro? You wanna fuck? Like just seeing them and being like, oh, they're gay. You wanna fuck, bro? Hey, you wouldn't like get all this fuck. I don't even know how to do it. Is this how you guys did it? Is this like, I'm gonna be big and just lifting up my shoulders? I have no idea. See, and the mentality there is okay. So if I were gay. What would I like? Me. I would like myself. Like, if I imagine the sexiest person alive, and I was gay, like, it would just be this, right here. Like, I couldn't resist, obviously. Do you not see this? Now, I think we need to similarly shame 
people worried about pedophiles in, in, in that kind of vein, right? Because these are parents who think about their kids and they're like, okay, so if I was a pedophile, I'm gonna be in two. Oh, my kid, right here. This is it, this is it, like the epitome. Like if you line up all the kids from ugliest to hottest, like you line leader every day, there's no rotation. It's great. Like that's, that's not only is that conceited, but that is horrifying, right? Yeah, so. On a, on a bit of an unrelated note, I, uh, I got drunk with my father-in-law over the holidays. Thank you. Um, it sounds like a bad idea because it is. So what, uh, what really happened is he started telling me the story, right? He started telling me about his dead brother. And I was just thinking, this is not the time right now. Over, but he just kept me going. He was going with it. I was in trance. I couldn't, I couldn't help but just be pulled in. Um, it wasn't about the dead brother. It was more like just the structure of the story. It was so well put together. It had characterization and production value. It had like sound design. I don't even know, like Wilhelm screaming there somewhere. It was, oh man. I was like, I thought I was just witnessing the birth of the next Steven Spielberg. That's all I'm saying. And I told my wife about it the next day, and she's like, oh yeah, he made it up. He just makes things up when he's drunk. There's no dead brother. He's, he's actually the youngest, or he doesn't have a little brother that died when he's little. I was like, okay, but I know that, except you can't improv a story like that. He had like, he had like supporting characters. Do you know how hard it is to just make up a B story? Yeah, it just, it's not a thing. So she goes, well, you know, he's really good at it. There was actually this one time, and at that point I just kind of faded out and I didn't really, wasn't listening, because in those five words, I knew exactly what story she was going to tell, because I had heard it at least three dozen times. And this isn't the sort of thing where like, you hear a story, you're with someone a long time, and um, you know, you kind of go out with friends and they haven't heard the story, so now you gotta sit through it. No, this is like one-on-one, -on -one, just like me to you. Like, if we're having deep conversation, if I tell you the same story like this five times in a row, I think you're gonna react well. I don't think it's gonna happen. But she does, and she knows. I'll kind of like drop hints, be like, oh yeah, I think I remember that. I think, uh, yeah, I think you told me that bit before. I've heard that. Oh yeah, yeah. You told me the story. You told I just I, I think you told me the story before. I think you told it to me. And she's like, I know. Do you have a problem? Are we gonna have a problem here? I'm gonna tell the story. She's like, no, it's fine. Oh. All right. Um, so I sit through the story, and uh, I'm I'm kind of like a I'm kind of like a super fan at this point. I like no lines and stuff. <laughs> and I get I get through the whole thing. I'm like, just like this jaded hype man, like, I oh, took the gun. Squirrel, I know my lines. <laughs> I know what they are. So the next time I saw her father-in-law, my father-in-law, I was kind of calling him out. I was like, what is this Hallmark based on a true story bullshit that's going on? And I go, hey, uh, I, was telling, I was telling her about the, uh, the brother, the story, but she didn't really know much about it. What's going on? It's like, oh, the dead one? Let me tell you a story about it. There's a story. So that tells me two things right off the bat. One, uh, he was so drunk when he told me that he doesn't remember telling me. And two, that he didn't make up the story on the spot. He workshopped it beforehand. He ran it by a couple of his buddies. I was the I was the test audience. Okay. Like he he had had this thing in the in the in the mill for a while and he just decided to unload it on me over some drunken Christmas ham. And then a third thing occurs to me, all in like half a second. My wife does not tell me the same stories over and over again because she has like OCD or something and just needs to finish. She certainly does not tell them over and over again because she thinks I'm interested. She tells them because she learned master storytelling from a man who does not remember half of his life. <laughs> so, 
that's kind of what we're leaving my daughter with. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can, I can blame it on them what I want, but really, I, uh, like I said, not a great dad. <laughs> not doing it. I'm there. That's about it. Um, I think I'm actually doing more damage by being there, but the statistics, ha the statistics haven't come back yet. We'll see in like another 10 years. Um, one of the things, the first time I realized this, the first time I was like, probably not doing so great, it involved, it uh, involved gummy snacks. She calls them yummies. Now, this may not sound like a big deal, but I need you to understand how my daughter eats gummy snacks. It's those yummies, these yummy yummies. We have them on top of the fridge, they're kind of a treat, so she'll be like, Daddy, can I please have a gummy snack? And uh, I'm like, yeah, sure. Take them down off the thing and give them to her. She's like, oh, thank you. And then she runs to her table and she starts pulling them out. Ooh, Chase, ooh, Marshall, they're Paw Patrol. She knows all the characters. She's still so surprised. Ooh, it's Rocky. Ooh, ooh. And she gets them all spread out. And then she'll kind of like hop them across the table. They're walking. It's like she's a shitty South Park animator. And just. <laughs> and she'll play and she'll get as much out of it as she can. And then she goes, okay, I'm going to eat you now. And she does. And, goes, and she's making them scream. She's like a ventriloquist. <laughs> and they're all gone. And it's great. Every step of the way, she values the taking it down. She values the taking it out of the thing. She values the playing, the eating. It's like she gets, she gets as much enjoyment out of this process as she possibly can. Now, for contrast, this is how I eat her gummies. I go and take them down in the fridge. Like a, like a jello shot. <laughs> All at once. And then rinse and repeat until the box is empty. And I'll put it back up on the fridge so no one notices. <laughs> so I'll kind of be standing there in the days, just like. And I still have like a crinkled thing. I don't know whether or not to drop it on the floor. Just, and you'll see it. Like, oh, Daddy, can I please have some yummies? And I said, oh, um, listen, baby, I don't know. I, there's, I, I ate them all. I ate all of them. And she thinks I'm talking about this one down here, so she'll point up back at the fridge and go, oh, so can I have some other ones? Um, okay, you're not getting this. Here, here we go. Uh, there's no more. There's no more fruit snacks ever. Um, they don't exist. If we bought more, I would eat them, so we're not getting them anymore. We're just done. I, th this is what I leave to you. This is my legacy, and I'm, this is what I, I, uh, I, instead of, instead of the enjoyment you would get, which would probably amount to more joy than I would get in the next year collectively, instead of that happening, I have chosen to get myself like a $20 stomachache, is what, is that's all it is. You got like three seasons of Paw Patrol down here. Uh, all right, thank you guys. All right, everybody, how are we doing? Good, good, good. Thank, you. thank you. Yeah. One more round of applause for Forte for having us. This is wonderful. Hope you're all enjoying the drink specials. Um, side note, I, I feel like I mentioned this earlier, but I'm not. Not going to be repetitive. Uh, please keep table conversation to a minimum. These guys are working hard up here, spilling their guts to you. Thank you for being quiet. We appreciate it. We really do. Um, our next comic is a very funny guy. He's hilarious. He's going to tell you some stories, and they're great stories. That I can tell you, they're the best stories. Nobody tells better stories than our next comic. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Clemente. Hey. He loves the song, hold on. I'm the best. 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 I'm gonna work my own sound for this here. 
That song is fantastic, just trust me. My name is Paul Clemente. How's everyone doing tonight? This is your part of the show where you make noise back at me. It is late. My God. I just feel it. Like, I am old and I feel it. I almost didn't come. I had a stomach ache before I got here. Uh, my diet is not ideal. And um, the guy that we were supposed to have here, Kip Reynolds, uh, a friend of ours, just had hernia surgery. So I, it's all in my head now that like everyone has these medical problems. And I, I was Googling my symptoms and I popped in the computer and I was like, stomach ache and just, I just don't feel good. And I realized I typed my symptoms into IMDB instead of WebMD. And it told me I was John Goodman. Ugh. My son begged me to tell a joke. Do you guys want to hear it? He came up with it. He is nine years old. He came up with it and he said, Dad, can you tell it? So you guys got to work with me, okay? What do you call a pretzel that you find out is a prince? I need you guys. You know the guys on the jokes work. I'll say it again. Ready? What do you call a pretzel that you find out is a prince? What? One more time. Ready? What ball? A pretzel. That was his joke. He paints to tell me. Uh. <laughs> oh man. I am 38 years old. Everyone please act surprised. Thank you so much. And I realize it just, I can just feel it sometimes. Not physically, but just mentally. Just like things that are happening to me. Like I'm at work and I'm eating lunch and I'm watching the TV and I am actively interested in weather that does not concern me. <laughs> it'll be on the weather table and it'll say, Fargo, North Dakota, 49 degrees to, uh, today. And I'll go, really? At this time of year? No. No, that's not me. That's not who I am. And just being old is telling everyone that there's food at home. When you drive by a McDonald's and they're like, cool, there's a McDonald's, and you go, there's food at home. <laughs> I caught myself in the bad weather last week turning down the radio to hear better, or to see better <laughs> up front. You guys ever do that, like you just get lazy, and tired, and it's cold outside, and you decide to just go out and drive anyways, and you have that little spot of visibility with your uh, defroster, and you're just looking through there. And your kids are like, Dad, can you see? And you're like, yeah, I can see. Getting old is actually returning things at the store. I actually returned to something at the store. I used to just throw it away if it didn't fit. I just threw it away. I didn't care. But now I'm returning things at the store like an adult, and it's terrible. So I was at Walmart uh, returning a fish. We did not get along. It's, that's a whole other bit. I'm not getting into it. Walmart's just shitty. No one ever wants to go to Walmart. No one says, like, let's go to Walmart. They're like, I have to go to Walmart. I, she likes to go to Walmart. Do you have a helmet? <laughs> she called you out. She's actively ignoring me. That is fine. And I realized, like, I tried to have a good time at Walmart. I tried to have a good attitude at Walmart. I realize you can't even smile at children at Walmart. You can't even smile at children. I forgot 
for one second how shitty kids are. And I saw this kid with their mom, and she is sitting in the car, and she has a pinwheel. And she is losing her goddamn mind over this pinwheel. She is having a great time. She is blowing on it. It's spinning. She's laughing. I wish I loved anything like this little kid loved this pinwheel. And I got caught up in the moment because I'm a dad, and again, I forgot how shitty kids are. And I'm watching this kid having a great time with their mom. And I, I am just caught up in this moment. And the mom looks at me, and we make eye contact, and she goes, no. And just scoots away in her cart. And I'm like, what is going on? And I was just sick of Walmart. I went to see how much time I had left there. And I realized my zipper was down the entire time. I know, ew, ew. For as much as I hate Walmart, I love Wegmans. Who here loves Wegmans? We are so lucky to live in a time and a place in history where Wegmans exists. My favorite part about Wegmans is W Kids. I know they're getting rid of it. It was breaking my heart. That's okay. You're adding right now. If you're subtracting, I would be like, nah. Bro. And at the time, when my kids were younger, it was fantastic. If you guys aren't familiar with W Kids, you can drop your children off at like this grocery store daycare, and it is fantastic. In there, they have markers every color of the rainbow. They have just gallons of disinfectant everywhere. And they have like documentaries in the DVD player. Like they're not just having kids just watch junk. It is great. You feel good about dropping your kids off there. When you drop your kids off there, you have so much time. Did you guys know that Wegmans has eight different kinds of honey mustard? Eight! I had no idea until I had all of this extra time. Smacking sugary cereals and gum and candy out like I was decanting up my tumbo. Just no, no, no. <laughs> so eventually, I took all the time I could. And I came back and I had to get my kids. I was all wrapped up. They, they don't let you leave your kids there. Because they ask you for your driver's license. <laughs> Which is funny. I'm glad you're appreciating this. <laughs> they ask you for your driver's license there. Like, if you're going to abandon your children at Wegmans, you don't fucking care how legal the road to freedom is. You're just gonna go. The driver's license isn't gonna stop you. <laughs> oh so I was picking up my children. And I saw this beautiful scene. Again, I'm human. I'm imperfect. I forgot how terrible children are. And they were coloring a picture with two other children. They were all working together on one collective picture. They weren't watching things. They weren't hitting each other. It was a fantastic time. And I got caught up in the moment again. I saw this beautiful picture of all these kids working together on one common goal. And I'm looking at them and I'm smiling. And then a lady comes up behind me, which I'm assuming is the other parent of the other kids. And she's having a great time and she's looking at them. She kind of nudges me and goes, hey. I said, hey. And she goes, well, which one's yours? And for some stupid reason, I go, well, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> it took me 30 minutes to get my children back. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. And I do things like that all the time because I think that's why it's ingrained inside my head I'm a comedian, I just can't help myself. Like, we have this thing in our brains that doesn't work like maybe the rest of you, where we're just constantly, we will sacrifice social 
and ethical things just <laughs> just to be funny. Like I used to lie to my children constantly when they were younger. Just constantly and for no reason. It wasn't teaching them a lesson. It wasn't making them better people. It was just to make me laugh. <laughs> I used to tell my kids that the smoke detectors were cameras in the house. And I have no idea whether they still believe it or not, but I'm just letting that one roll. I used to tell my kids that they only had 100 words to use for the entire day. If they went past that, their tongue would fall out of their heads and they would have no more words for the rest of their lives. That's how they were programmed. You get 100 words a day forever. And they have no idea what 100 is at all. You can just make it up and they'll believe you. <laughs> they'll come in the room and like someone will take something from someone and they'll go, Dad, 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 Dad. And I'll just go, one, two, three. <laughs> and then they'll panic and they'll be like, okay, it, was, it wasn't that important. I am so sorry. <laughs> Or sometimes towards the end of the day, they'll go, Dad, that's me. How many more words do I have for the rest of the day? Say nine less than you had before you talked to me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you guys having a good time? <laughs> this is the part where you make some noise. I care to me. This is a good time. I'm loving it. I used to tell my kids that if they did not go to bed, the sun would not rise the next morning. <laughs> the entire Earth's heat, energy, and light source would be dependent on whether they wanted to hear Goodnight Moon one more time. <laughs> Sometimes I go to switch their light off, and they go, Dad? I just point at the window and I'll be like, hey man, that's up to you. <laughs> that's heavy. That's so heavy and it was funny to me. It's a lot of pressure for a kid. Like, you, can you imagine them on like Christmas Eve morning and they're having a hard time sleeping? And then it like cuts to Paris, noon outside of a cafe, and there's a guy smoking a cigarette looking at a pitch black sky at noon. <laughs> And he would just look up at the sky and go, uh, Cellophon de Polanque. He wouldn't speak English just for that joke. <laughs> it's Paul's kid again. And we used to live in a neighborhood that had an ice cream truck, which is, do they still have ice cream trucks? Do they? You're an excellent addition to my act right now. Thank you very much. Kane. Kane. Well, I, I lived in the, in the crummy part of Jamestown, and they had an ice cream truck. And my kids used to lose their minds. They'd hear the song. They'd hear it down the road. They would develop this like dog-like hearing and be like, oh my god, the ice cream truck is happening. And they'd get all excited. And if they were good, they would get ice cream. If they were shitty, I would say, hold on, listen. No, really listen, guys. Oh, no. That's just the ambulance playing music for sick kids. No ice cream today. Oh, man. And I do these things for me, really. <laughs> but in all honesty, I don't think I ever really had a chance because my parents were really weird. Like, really weird. And I'm not talking like, I'm sure a lot of everyone can be like, yeah, my parents are weird too. Like, we had breakfast for dinner one time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my parents were so weird, they raised a stand up comedian. <laughs> I feel better asking a room full of people whether they kick their cats out of the room before they masturbate or not. Oh my God. Do you? I'm going to ask everyone. Okay. Raise your hand. Do you kick your pets out of your room before you masturbate or no? Or do you just go? 
Like it's becoming a real problem for me, honestly. <laughs> like I got I got time before work. I don't know, I got 15 minutes. My car's heating up, right? <laughs> And uh, I go into my room and I close the door and my, and my cat just rolls on her belly and she looks all cute. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to send passive aggressive emails all day, I guess. <laughs> my time is over. But my parents were weird. Like, my dad used to wear a Speedo at the public pool no. all the time. <laughs> that is one of my earliest and probably latest memories of him. He had a black Speedo with blue and green like designs right here, and he looked like me, so it was not a pleasant sight. And I'm not trying to body shame him. I'm not. You are who you are. If you want to wear a Speedo, wear a Speedo. And I'm not even against Speedos because I was on the swim team at one point. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I took swimming lessons forever and ever and ever, and then the swim coach was like, do you want to be on the swim team? I was like, sure. What do you do? And he goes, well, you go down there, and you come back. That's it. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And my dad wore a Speedo, and he never told me why, and I would always have to defend him. Constantly, like, this was back in the 90s. Yeah, in the 90s. And um, they would see him and they'd be like, oh, look at that guy, he's, he's gay. <laughs> and that's how the sexuality worked back in the 90s. If three or more heterosexual men claimed you as gay, you were gay. <laughs> so I'd always have to defend them. I'd be like, ah, oh, guys, 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 that's, that's my dad. And it was embarrassing, that's my dad, just, just leave him alone. Like, okay, okay, we get it. We get it. That means you're gay too, right? <laughs> That's just how it worked back then. And one day when I got older, it was driving me crazy. He wore a Speedo every single day. Every day. Not, no, just at the pool. At home, he, he dressed. It wasn't much better at home, really, if I'm going to be honest <laughs> He was a provocative man. <laughs> I'm filming that, so if, he, if you see that, Dad, good job, buddy. <laughs> and one day I just couldn't stand it. So I asked my mom, and I was like, why is he wearing a Speedo? And then, and then she told me, and then it, it just bothered me forever. Like, I found out my dad wore Speedos before every day, because he has been stripping for years. He has been stripping for years. I wasn't even mad. I wasn't even mad at the fact that he stripped. I was the mad that I had to start my morning, my morning breakfast with Pranks cereal. No, Dad, Pranks is not the same as tricks. You're making that stripper money. Do the upgrade. I wanted the MC Hammer tattoo, and I got stamps instead. And this shit just went on forever and ever and ever until I just had enough. You guys want to hear what the final straw was? Yes. Yes? The final straw. I was a 13-year-old man. I, I had man thoughts. I was doing manly things. I had, a pa I, I had a paper route. I was a paper man. <laughs> not a paper boy. And I collected every single penny I had from this paper route, right? And I bought myself a Super Nintendo. I was so excited for the Super Nintendo. I bought it. It was mine. No one else could touch it. I earned every single penny to that, and I bought myself a Super Nintendo. 
And not only I had a Super Nintendo, I was allowed to bring it over to my best friend's house and play Super Contra all afternoon. Right? Does anyone know the, uh, the Konami code? The Konami code? For 30 lives in Contra? Yeah, left, right, left, right, left. <laughs> you know it? Shout it out, man. It's like left, right, left, right, A, B. Oh, I'm down, I'm down. Yeah, yeah. Do it up. So excited. Fantastic. Great job. <laughs> so, what was. Yeah, give it up for him for knowing the Konami code, first of all. And outing that he's over 35. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, I was allowed to bring my Super Nintendo to my friend's house, which was such a big deal because any, once anything was plugged into my parents' house, it was a permanent fixture. He didn't want me messing with the wires. So I got to take it to my friend's house. We were gonna play Super Contra all day, drink pop, eat garbage, just have a good time. I was there for 10 minutes. And my dad called my friend's mom and said, I'm picking him up. And she knocks upstairs and she goes, Paul, that's me. Your dad's gonna come pick you up in a few minutes. And I've been there for 10 minutes. We didn't even get past the first boss, this big monster turtle thing. And I'm like, what's, what's wrong? I don't know. You sounded pissed though. <laughs> So I'm 13 and I'm just, my mind is swimming. I'm like, oh my God, I have done so much horrible shit at the house. I have no idea what he caught me for. And I'm thinking, I'm like, ah, Jesus. Did he find my, did he find my magazines? My dirty magazine? No, no. I put them in between my Nintendo powers, so. Got that locked down. Did you find out I've been drinking the Christmas wine and replacing it with Kool-Aid? No. No. Oh my God. Did you find out I peed on the dog that one time? It was completely, it was an accident, guys. That's not who I am. That's a whole other bit that you're gonna have to come see another time. I have no idea. So my dad, like, fucking Tokyo drifts into my friend's driveway. <laughs> and I come out with all my wires and shit, and I, I walk in really nervously. And my dad's stonewalling me. I'm like, what's wrong? Is everyone okay at home? He says, nothing. Is someone hurt? Did someone die? He says, nothing. So it was a really weird drive home. And we get to my house, he opens up the front door, and he grabs me by my majestic, thick, flowing mullet, <laughs> like this, and just drags me upstairs. And we get to my room, and I'm on the floor, and I see a pen. A pen has fallen down from my homework to the floor and somehow, someway, leaked ink on the carpet. Now, I didn't think at the time that I was responsible for gravity <laughs> when I left the house. He didn't feel that way. I got grounded for an indefinite amount of time after a beration of how I don't respect anything that he's ever done, all the hard work he's ever put in, this was my fault. So I was grounded and I was pissed off. I was 13, I didn't deserve this. I was a grown man and I felt this horrible, heavy sense of injustice. I felt wrong. I shouldn't be grounded for gravity when I am not home to control this gravity. I'll catch you up later. <laughs> so, 
As I was grounded, I went outside to let my dogs out to go to the bathroom, and I saw my dad down below me from the porch toiling away in his tomato garden. And he had this fucking stupid, happy, Charlie Brown smile on his face. <laughs> toiling away at this tomato. He was just like, I just grounded the fuck out of that guy. I'm not going to worry about anything for him for, for weeks. I'm not even going to tell him when he's ungrounded. And he was just toiling away in his tomato gr uh, garden, just having the best time. And I'm looking down at him full of this 13-year-old injustice. <laughs> and I go, you know what? I did have a mullet. I was like, Psh. And it just flowed in the wind, just like that. I was like, you know what? I got an idea. So later that night, I let the dogs out again. And I looked, made sure they were preoccupied. My parents were watching figure skating. They, they loved figure skating. I don't know why. They both like figure skating, like equally. Did you like figure skating? No. You like figure skating? Oh. Do you feel like traumatized by it? <laughs> so they were occupied, and it was time for my plan. And what I did is I looked down at my dad's tomato garden. I looked down and I go, all right. And I took my pants down. And I sat down like this. And I unleashed one of the most toxic, biologically satisfying shits I've ever taken down upon his tomato garden. It felt fantastic, psychologically and physically. And it made the best sound. It sounded like when a dog gets scared on a kitchen floor and he just starts running. It just destroyed this tomato garden. And I felt great. Like justice served. And I went to bed after drinking some Christmas wine and reading some dirty magazines. So the next day, it rained. <laughs> and then the next day it rained. And then the next day it rained. Were you guys there? You guys could have stopped me. It rained for three days. And then it was the weekend. My dad's back out in the tomato garden the first second he gets a chance. It was nice and warm. And I'm upstairs and I'm listening to Metallica. That's what kids do. <laughs> and I hear from outside to my room, Oh my God! And I'm like, oh my God, I forgot I did that. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Oh my God, how much trouble? You know what, he, can't, he cannot prove that it's me. There's, there's no way, there's no way. He would, would he take a DNA test? Oh my God, he would take a DNA test. Oh my, oh man. I'm in so much trouble right now. I've made a massive mistake. So I go to the top of the stairs and I'm listening to what my dad does and he opens up the back porch and he walks into the house and he goes, oh my God. Can you believe how great these tomatoes look? I am so good at growing tomatoes. They are so big and red and plump. I don't know what I did. I am so great at tomatoes. He called his mother, which is 100% Italian from Naples, Italy. Ma, these tomatoes I planted last week, they look fantastic. I am so good at growing tomatoes. And he picked a couple. And I'll tell you what, guys. I am 38 years old. Pretend you're surprised, please. Oh my God. Thank you. I feel fantastic. You guys are great. 
And I'll tell you what, there's probably been 10 perfect moments in my life. Like having my kids and a bunch of other stuff. But there was a time that I literally got to see the person across the table from me literally eat my shit. <laughs> it was perfect. Thank you guys so much. My name is Paul Clemente. I hope you had a good time. All right, ladies and gentlemen. How about that Paul Clemente, huh? Let's give it up for the rest of the comics you've seen tonight. Woo! Woo! Thank you, thank you. What, one more time for Forte for having us. All right, all right. You guys are warming up. Yeah, don't worry, we still got a couple more comics, and trust me, they're great. They're wonderful. And I'm going to roll into the next one right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy's hilarious. Hilarious guy. Give it up for Jeremy Little. The dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Special Victims Unit. These are their stories. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if I just didn't address that? I don't think I'm gonna. I'm Jeremy Little, holy shit, everyone, give yourselves a round of applause for coming out, for being such great sports of, uh, of, of, of comedy and of everything that we're doing up here. Yeah, I'm Jeremy Little, I'm from a tiny little town called Brockton, probably heard of it. Uh, I'd like to think of myself as the Michael Jackson of stand-up comedy from Brockton, because I do things a little bit differently, and I also plan on spending my adult life as a white male. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Brockton is a tiny little town. I only graduated with 40 kids. That's not because of the town, it's just because I was homeschooled by Mormons. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I woke up today with uh, my worst hangover of 2018, which felt like important at the time that I realized we're only like 19 days in, so <laughs> it was bound to happen at some point. I like you guys already. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys in on a little, uh, Something I don't really tell that many people. This is something I don't really share with a lot of people. I actually have a three-year-old. And the reason I don't tell that many people is because I actually just picked him up outside of a bodega in Jersey a couple of months ago. <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, yeah. but he's a good time. We have fun, we, we have good. I, we, we do the same thing all the time. I go, I, I go, hey, hey, Neil, how's it going? And he says the same thing every time. He goes, my name's Brendan. <laughs> Classic meal, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but he's a good time. You know, we spent a couple months together. Over that time, I've come to love him like a son. Yeah. I love him like a stepson. I like him like a stepson. I don't know. You know, if anyone's looking for Neil, Brendan, okay. Let me know. He's, uh, he's at my apartment sleeping off a hangover. <laughs> Give it up for uh, feedback, ladies and gentlemen. He's been uh, angry. angry and <laughs> featured. <laughs> so there's a couple jobs that I could never have. Uh, I think the, the biggest job that I, could, I would never actually be able to have, though, is being a pastor. And not just because I've said terrible things in front of audiences about how I kidnap children. I think the biggest reason I would never be able to be a pastor is because I'm too jealous of a person. Like, I'm too jealous. Like, if I was a pastor, you know, I'm sitting there in my god office, I don't know what they're called. Directory! And I'm, uh, directory? Yeah. Thank you, that's actually new information to me. <laughs> so I'm sitting there in my directory, which, which sounds oddly medical. <laughs> like, I, I thought that was where all the urology exams happened. <laughs> Which might not be that different from a urectory. <laughs> Christian church, everybody. They write the jokes themselves. Sorry. So I'm sitting in my urectory. 
That will never not be funny to me. And I'm, and I'm taking notes in my Bible. Except for I don't know what to take notes about, so I'm just like drawing cubes. And like laughing every time I see the word damn in hell. Like, there's a swear word in the Bible. Nice. And someone would come in. And they would say, oh my God, Pastor Little, Pastor Jeremy, last night I spoke with Jesus, and Jesus spoke to me. Wow. But see, I'm so, I'm so, I'm, I, 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 like, I'm so selfish that I would go, really, you talked to Jesus last night? <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait. <laughs> That's me getting on the phone with Jesus. <laughs> I love that this is really good for my flow. <laughs> See, it's like, wait a second, you talked to Jesus last night? Hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry, he's not picking up right now. <laughs> hey, who the fuck is Jeff? <laughs> I don't know, he said he was talking to you last night? Yeah, oh, hold on. Like, what time did you talk to Jesus? 7.15? I thought you were at Greg's house last night. You know what, you know what, you know what, fucking, just pick up your phone, I'm not doing this over text. That's how I assume most pastors communicate with uh, the God who created all of life. While we're on the subject, let's keep talking about it. New year, we're gonna have a, another Easter. Uh, you know, that's gonna be exciting. Who are you guys crucifying for Easter this year? Donald Trump! <laughs> Topical. Last year, last year for Lent, I actually gave up Easter, and I still have no idea when to stop. <laughs> that's the funniest joke about Lent you will ever hear. <laughs> so, I don't know, you know. Jesus, uh, Jesus ended up on the cross. He didn't just end up on the cross. It wasn't like one day he was like, yup, that's me. I bet you're wondering how I got here. <laughs> you know, he fucking, uh, he went and had all those things. He went and he was, in the, uh, he, was, he was in the tomb for three days. And by the way, Jesus was alone in the tomb for three days. You know he jacked off at least one time. I jack off every day and I've got stuff to do. <laughs> and then he comes back and he gets all of his friends together and everyone's like, Jesus, what's up? or whatever their handshake was. And he gets all his friends together and he says, guys, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write a book. And he said, oh, that's awesome. Everyone, all his friends said, oh, that's awesome. You're gonna write a book. He said, no, 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 sorry. You're gonna write a book. <laughs> Damn. I mean, Jesus did some cool stuff, but not deserving of ghost writers. He's not Drake. I mean, really, what did he do? Holy shit, Tyler Cocorelli, everybody. Um, but what did he do? I mean, what, did, did, did that thing with the fish and the bread? I think that story really just boils down to Jesus just invented the net, right? And when you see uh, those, the, the people on the chains, right? The, he's on the crucifix, I, the little gentleman, so I call him. <laughs> that's not him on a crucifix, that's just him just tossing a net out to sea, just. <laughs> and the thing with the, with the bread, I think that's sort of, he probably just found yeast. And he was like, you guys have some bread. More bread. It's flesh. But I don't know. I don't, th I, I don't think that really, what, if I step out here, is that gonna make it better for everyone? Oh, is this a good spot? I love it. But yeah, I mean, I don't, know if that, I don't know if that works. Like, what's the modern day equivalent of that? What I think it is, is that, so say someone texted me and said, Jeremy, you got this raging party going on, everyone has a great time, everyone's having a great time, here's the issue, everyone's hungry. And I go, I got it. Pop in the car, go through the drive through show up to the party, kick the door in. Because I imagine Jesus kicked in every door he ever entered, like, don't worry, I'm also a carpenter, I'll fix that shit later. <laughs> And I went to everyone in the party and I said, hey, I heard everyone's hungry, but great news. I brought fish fillets. <laughs> they didn't have deep fryer set back. Oh, they didn't. No, they didn't. 
Amen. I'm glad that we have someone factually checking my story about Jesus Christ jacking off in his tomb. <laughs> The fish fillet, though, I don't know if you guys know this, the name of that sandwich is actually the fish o fillet. Right? Because no one knows seafood like the Irish. <laughs> Who the fuck named that sandwich? It makes me wonder, like, I used to work at a restaurant, and people would call in and order food, and we would make it. You guys know how a restaurant works. I don't need to tell you that. And one time a lady called in, and she said, hey, can I get a PLT? And that's when I did it. Proved the doctors wrong, proved my parents, proved the teachers wrong. And I asked a stupid question. She said, Can I get a BLT? I said, What do you want on that? Jeremy, come on. She wants bacon. She wants lettuce. And she wants tomato. But it made me wonder, like, who didn't, who forgot to name the BLT? Who was too busy? They have names for stuff. You got your Cubans, your Rubens, all the Ubens. <laughs> Su submarine subs, heroes. Uh, you know, who is too busy? And I just, I like to imagine the people who named everything. You know, Nameco, Big Dictionary. <laughs> at the beginning of everything, and they're having a board meeting, and there's the, there's the main guy, and he holds up this fruit. He goes, he goes, all right, we're naming everything, guys. I've got this orange round fruit. What are we going to call it? Gary, what do you think? Gary, Gary was his favorite. Gary goes, orange. I fucking love it. You're awesome, Gary. That's such a good idea, man. You're so good. So meta. <laughs> All right, we've got these little cakes that are in cups. Gary, you want to go two for two? Cupcakes? Woo! Gary! This guy was, like, way too intense for his job. They later fired him for cocaine abuse. And then he pulls out another thing. He goes, we've got these, these yellow, long fruits. Uh, I don't know, Stacy, do you want to go try it? Stacy's reading the room. She goes, yellows? Fuck you, Stacy. You're obviously just cheating off of Gary's papers. <laughs> Gary, what do you think? Gary goes, bananas? Love it! Woo! <laughs> And mad sexism in the workplace. <laughs> if you're saying nothing, you're part of the problem. <laughs> oh boy. You guys having fun? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna talk about suicide. <laughs> you can't. You know, this is a, this is a, I'd like to talk about this. I like to have an open conversation about this. There's jokes in this, but this is a real conversation I like to have, you know? You can't kill yourself, in the Christian religion especially, you know? Which has always been weird to me because God is omnipotent, he knows everything, and Jesus is God. Kind of feels like he really walked into that crucifixion. <laughs> that was really the first suicide by cop, really. <laughs> you know, you can't, I can't. I can't. I would never, here's my thing, is that I'm too much of a narcissist that I would never kill myself unless it would be a complete fucking national tragedy. That is, the, that is where I would kill myself. And the problem is when people decide to, it's when they realize that that idea that it's going to affect other people leaves their brain and they realize it's just for them. And that's when it happens. At least I assume the exit interview on a successful suicide is pretty short. It's actually zero questions. But I, really, I know how I'm gonna die. Here's what's gonna happen is I'm gonna write one day the funniest joke in the world. I'm gonna write it down on a piece of paper. I'm gonna walk into my bathroom and I'm gonna leave the funniest joke in the world sitting on the sink and I'm going to go into my bathtub and I'm gonna kill myself. And then a couple of weeks are going to go by. I don't go out much. No one's looking for me. <laughs> and finally, someone's going to come in and, and walk into the bathroom and go, Oh my God, he's dead. Oh my God, he's dead. And then they're going to see the sink and see the piece of paper. And they're going to go, Oh my God, he left a note. And then they're going to read the funniest joke in the world. They're like, <laughs> And we're really gonna throw him for an emotional loop there. 
And then, you know, I'm gonna have my... I'm not gonna have my funeral, you guys will. <laughs> Um, and but my, 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 I'm gonna have a themed funeral. The theme is gonna be booby traps. <laughs> Most of the chairs will have like a, a loose leg, and like you're just, everyone's just gonna fucking fall down. And I'm gonna have a spring-loaded coffin, but instead of it doing the stereotypical thing where it flies out into the audience, it's gonna be sprung way too tight, and my body's just gonna fly up and hit the ceiling really hard, like way too hard for it to be funny. And I'm gonna be like, I. I know what he wanted, but that was not good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can already, uh, I know what they're gonna say in the eulogy. I know, what the, I, know, I know what the last things that will ever be said about me are. Is that Jeremy Little, he died as he lived. In very poor taste. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jeremy Little one more time. Alright, I, I saw some people just walked in, so I'm going to go over this again. Um, please turn your cell phones to silent. We have a no heckle policy. Keep, keep your table conversation to a minimum. And we'll keep rolling with that. I hope everybody heard me. Okay, so you've seen three quarters of the comedy group Karate Sleepover tonight. And you've seen the wonderful Dan Davis. Well, we're gonna wrap it up tonight with a very funny comedian who's the fourth member of Karate Sleepover. You guys are really in for a treat. He's a really good friend of mine. He's a great comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jim Drain. Everybody. Like I should try to dress classy, but then like people constantly remind me of how unclassy I am. Like I was like, hey, you guys see the Batman pictures on the fucking wall? <laughs> you guys see these? Like that's not Batman. It's like oh, and they're like, and plus your shirt's completely fucking wrinkled. <laughs> I was like, well, either I'm adulting wrong because I hung this up in my closet, or someone's like sneaking into my house and just wrinkling up all my laundry on me. <laughs> Oh boy, guys, it's fun to be here though. Uh, fun fact, guys, the last comedian is supposed to be the best, but he also consumes the most alcohol before getting on stage. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, talk about my ride up here today, okay? All right, so I'm having kind of a bad day, and uh, I'm gonna explain why. The problem is, uh, when I was coming into the Forte tonight, and I was getting out of the car, this little house fly flew out the window. Fruit fly. It can be a fruit fly if you want it for the story, it's just a joke. <laughs> but so, this fly, fruit fly, comes flying out this window, and I felt so bad. And it's because I know he's been in there since my trip from Salamanca. And I mean, he was probably just in there for like all the old like Mc McDonald's milkshake containers. <laughs> But I, I felt so bad because now I know this guy has to start his life all over again. <laughs> like he's just like, well, I guess this is where I live now. <laughs> I apologize. I do a terrible fruit fly impression. <laughs> now, house fly, fruit fly. But so you know. But I also though at the same time I don't feel that bad because like I feel like these flies have it made because they're, they're like the biggest sex addicts out there like i don't know if you've ever seen two flies having sex but they like 
fly through the air doing that shit, man. Like, I mean, there's. I stumbled upon this. I was. I did like Google search it, but I seen two flies having sex, and I was sneaking up on them with a fly swatter. I mean, these flies are seconds away from death, and they just continued fucking and flew away. Like I couldn't imagine. I could never imagine being in that scenario where like I was so close to death. Like I couldn't be at a girl's house then all of a sudden I hear footsteps coming up the stairs. And all of a sudden the dad just kicks in the door and he's fucking has a shotgun. Like I would never just be like, I couldn't do it. I don't have the agility for it. Oh man. Anyone uh, take 86 ever? I'm mean, sure it's, it's a pretty important highway. I'm sure we've all been on it. Um, there's this billboard out there. And on this billboard, it says, Heroin Edition Starts Here. It has a picture of a pill bottle, a pot leaf, and a beer bottle. And I know it's supposed to be some kind of like anti-drug billboard, but like in my mind, I was like, that'd be a great place to sell heroin. <laughs> like, I'm no marketing expert, but come on guys. Location, location, location. <laughs> oh boy. I got into Jamestown, and uh, this is like the people that you see around Jamestown. Like, I, I pull into Jamestown and I see this kid standing outside his house. And this kid has a toy gun in his hand. And as I'm driving by, he takes three pretend shots at me. And I'm all for supporting a child's imagination. So I played dead and crashed into his house. <laughs> I gotta be careful for doing that though. It's not the first time I've done it. First time I actually got arrested. And it was very, uh, it was a very tough time for me being in jail. And uh, luckily enough for me though, there's this really nice guy in there. I mean, this guy was so nice. He even offered to take my ass to Pound Town. I mean, I'm assuming he probably just figured like a nice cruise would like take my mind off things. <laughs> the only thing I'm worried about is you can't even find Pound Town on Google Maps. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just hoping it's not like in a shitty area or anything. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, you know, like I love, I love Paul's joke about you know he told one of his jokes that like his uh, nine-year-old bro, I think, and I was like, man, that's a great idea. I should just like tell everyone like my kid wrote all these jokes. <laughs> but then I'm like, shit, I got a lot of jokes about my dick. <laughs> CPS would be knocking it on my door. <laughs> Kids though, man, they're great. Like, I don't have a, don't think I want a, but they're great. You know, like, uh, I was uh, walking into Walmart, that place that Paul hates. Ooh. Sorry, we can't all go to Wegmans. Um, <laughs> I'm walking in there, and I see this family walking out. And uh, as I'm walking through, I can't help but hear the little daughter goes, Mommy, why am I still in my pajamas? And as a concerned citizen, I couldn't help but be the person to have a stopper and say, sorry to tell you this, sweetheart, but your family's white trash. <laughs> I shouldn't say white trash, though, because I feel like it's a little racy, and uh, I've, off I've recently been a victim of racism. Uh, I went to uh, the Hibachi Bar and Grill. Have you guys ever been there? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, like, there are Japanese people that walk around with like cowboy hats. I'm like, shit, is this what racism feels like? Because <laughs> it's purple. <laughs> oh boy. I hope everyone's just having as much fun as I am tonight. <laughs> you know, I recently realized my self esteem has been way down. And I feel like it's because I don't have, I no longer have my controlling girlfriend that's like, trying to convince me like every girl wants to sleep with me. <laughs> like, I mean like I know it's never true, but she's always saying shit like, you see that girl over there? She 
can't take her eyes off you. I was like, well, it could be because I just pushed her kid. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that I'm not gonna attack him again. She's like, well, when you walk by that girl, shh, her eyes followed you all across the room. So like, yeah, I crop dusted the shit out of that one. <laughs> Another big problem is uh, with my self-esteem is I recently found out that uh, all those uh, Asian emails, all those girls that want to sleep with me, are scams. <laughs> That one set me back. <laughs> Do it anyways. Do it anyways, yeah. Hey, here's all my money. Love me. <laughs> oh, boy. But, you know, like, my girlfriend was so overprotective. Like, I mean, here's an example. Uh-oh. What, do you know it? Do you know where this is going? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got him. All right, so we're at Walmart, the place where Paula hates. And, uh... We're just, we're just shopping for some groceries. And uh, as we're going through the aisles, this girl, I'm trying to get by this girl, so I say, excuse me. And she just replies with the comment, you're fine. But the problem is, my girlfriend didn't hear things the way I heard things. Like, what I heard was, you're fine. And what my girlfriend heard was, <laughs> You are fine. So she immediately starts going off on me. She goes, Jim, do you know this girl? Have you fucked this girl? Is she trying to get into your pants? And I said, first off, I haven't fucked every girl that I know. Because I've known my mother for years. And she still won't put out. Okay, got it. You slut. You slut. Oh, boy. You're all fun here. And I said, secondly, I don't think that 80-year-old woman is trying to get in my pants. If anything, she's still trying to get into a condo in Florida. Uh, I just don't, I don't understand girls, so I have a, I have a problem understanding them. Like, I don't know what you said, but I'll agree with you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just I don't understand. Like I, I have a bad time like picking up on signals that girls are sending me. Like I could have a girl like shaking her tits in my face. I'm like, man, this poor girl's seizing up right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, if I didn't have this erection, I'd do something. <laughs> uh, but like, uh, guys, all right, what guys are here with their girlfriend right now, or wife, whatever? Alright. Anyone here live with their girlfriend or wife? You guys, have you guys ever just been. Alright, guys, stop fucking rubbing it in, alright? I get it. You guys are happy, I'm not. Have you ever just been laying there? You wake up the next morning, you roll over, you're just looking at them, you're just staring in their eyes. And you start to think, when the fuck did you move in with me? <laughs> like, they do this shit without you even knowing. Like, like I, I don't get it. They're like fucking squirrels in winter hiding nuts, man. They, they got fucking clothes all around their fucking house. You don't see it coming. I mean, I fucking, I remember... I woke up one day and I said, hey, let's go get breakfast. She said, okay, well, I just need to change my clothes. So I'm thinking, all right, I'll drive her to her house. She'll get changed, we'll go get breakfast. She comes out of the bathroom 10 minutes later with a brand new outfit on, fucking different shoes. And I'm just like, let me see that purse. How fucking deep is that fucking purse? Are you telling me I've been fucking buying snacks and drinks at the movie theaters? And you can fit a whole fucking outfit in there? I, I, I just don't understand. I remember I got up and I'm walking by my washer and dryer and I see a basket of her clothes there. 
And like I didn't I didn't make the connection. I'm like, oh her washer must be broke. She's washing them here. And then she's like, hey, uh, my dad's gonna bring over my dresser later. I'm like, it's not that much clothes. We could probably bring the clothes to the dresser. <laughs> we, let's let's work smarter, not harder. We don't have to. We don't have to you can put them away when you get home. We don't have to put them away here and bring the dressers back to your house. I, I just don't understand how that works. A problem, another problem we had was uh, she was always complaining so much. She's like, No, I don't do the dishes. It's a woman's job. <laughs> do you, what, do you have a girlfriend? Because you know everything they say. <laughs> well, the problem, the problem that we had is uh, she was always complaining. She said, Jim, how come you don't ever try being sexy in the bedroom? I said, I'm a male. How am I supposed to be sexy in the bedroom? Buy a strap off. <laughs> oh, man. My dick is throbbing over there. Uh, I don't know what you find sexy, man, but I don't think I want to know you. Oh, man. Helicopter with a fucking dildo. <laughs> I was like, what do you want me to do and be sexy in the bedroom? I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you want. And she goes, why don't you, uh... I'm like... No, no, that's not what she said. Like, I don't know where you were in the room where you're getting this info from. But that's not what she said. But I was like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to, like, drag my ball sack across your face? Because that's not going to be sexy for anybody. I had to help your dad move a fucking dresser. <laughs> it's sweaty. She <laughs> goes, so, uh, it's okay, finish laughing, I'll wait. <laughs> this kind of shit is easier every day, man. She goes, no. Why, why don't you like, uh... Why don't you like try playing with yourself a little bit? Oh my God. Turn the well, have you guys seen me play with myself? Is that why it's so funny? Do it. Uh, I said, baby, baby, baby. Listen, there's nothing funny. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. There's nothing sexy. Also, nothing funny. About me playing with myself for two minutes and you cleaning it up for five. <laughs> Plus, like, I still don't, I still don't even understand sex that well. You know, like, I had a hard time, I had a hard time obtaining knowledge when I was in Project No. Everyone know what Project No is? Yeah. Oh, a bunch of sex experts in here, huh? <laughs> Fucking a bunch of wild animals ready to release their knowledge on the world. <laughs> but like, I'm not, I'm not good at it because I had a hard time focusing because uh, there's this time where the teacher says, hey, kids, if you have any questions, ask them now. You're not gonna be judged. We just wanna make sure we clear up everything. And so I said, okay, I have, I, have, I have one question. Can a penis get stuck in a vagina? <laughs> you guys sound like the rest of the fucking class. <laughs> See, they, they all thought, thought it was a joke too, so I was like, ha 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 ha! You know, the teacher laughed, the students laughed, I died a little on the inside, but I got my answer, so that's all that matters. What was the answer? She said, maybe. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. But yeah, uh, my ex-girlfriend though, I mean, she was, she was uh, pretty over the top. Uh, 
she got really mad one day. I don't know if you guys know where Allegheny and Cuba is. Yeah. yeah, okay. So if you know where it is, you know how like close they are together. Yeah. 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 yeah they're very close. Yeah. Well, anyways, all right. So I worked in Allegheny, lived in Cuba, and so I just get out of work and I call her and I say, Hey, look, uh, I'm just getting out of work now. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna grab some beer. I'm gonna come back to the house, and we're just gonna have a few beers, have a good time. You know? Okay, cool. So. Uh, I go to the store, I buy a 30 pack, and uh, apparently it was during uh, Mardi Gras season. So they had this thing where they gave you a free thing of beads every time uh, you purchase a 30 pack. I don't think anything of it. I go home, throw the 30 pack on the table, the beads right down next to it. About two minutes later, my girlfriend comes running out of the room and she goes, where the fuck were you? It wasn't funny for me. And she goes, where the fuck were you? Why do you have these beads? What, you go to fucking Mardi Gras? I said, I don't know how you think time works. <laughs> I had to break it down to her like a fucking math problem, you know? I was like, I was like, your fucking loving, faithful boyfriend is at point A. And it takes fuck 20 minutes to get home, add on the five minutes at the beer store, so if your loving boyfriend arrives at point B in 25 minutes, how many bitches was he able to fuck in that time? All of them. The way I fucking come, probably. <laughs> but so, I go, look, it was, I, was like, I had to fucking call the gas station and say, like, I know, like, I don't know if you guys have ever had problems with, like, trust issues with, like, your significant other, but, uh, like, sometimes you have, like, call up, like, a friend or a relative and be like, hey, I was there, right? And, like, yeah, you were. I had to call the fucking gas station so they could tell my girlfriend she's crazy. I was like, hey, uh, hey, guys, uh. I don't remember, I don't know if you guys remember me, but I was just in there, I bought a 30 pack, I had the Batman wallet. <laughs> um, I just got a quick question for you guys. Um, are you guys doing some kind of like promotion right now where you're like giving out some Mardi Gras beads for the purchase of the 30 pack? And the girl goes, why? Said, uh, well, my girlfriend thinks I'm cheating on her. And I'm just looking so for some verification right now. And they, oh, she goes, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, we're doing that promotion right now. I said, okay, cool. Hold on, the punchline's coming. <laughs> and then so I go, okay, cool. So, uh, and like, I didn't have like show my dick to get those beads, right? And she goes, oh, no, 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 no. You, you didn't have to show your dick to get those beads. We were actually really surprised that you did. <laughs> Something, uh, I have uh, two cats, and uh, I don't have them because I was like, oh, like 25 is a good time to like figure out my life's not getting any better, so I might as well get some cats. <laughs> the thing was, uh, when I met my uh, when I met my girlfriend, she already had a cat, and uh, that cat ended up liking me more than it liked her, so she was upset. So. Being a good boyfriend, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go get her a kitten. But then that kitten also liked me more than I liked her. So then I'm like, all right, third time's a charm. I go out and I buy her a third cat. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this isn't an intervention right now. Let me talk and tell my jokes, okay? You can go afterwards. <laughs> And then uh, so I go out and buy her a third cat, and you guessed it, that cat also liked me more than it liked her. The problem with this joke is, it took three cats to realize nobody fucking liked my girlfriend. <laughs> and I know you guys are doing the math in your head right now, you're like, oh, he said he had two cats, but he said there was three. That's because that third cat was like, 
dude, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> He's like, there's not enough fucking meow mix in this world to get you to stick around with this fucking bitch. <laughs> He's like, I will go out in the wild and survive off chipmunk assholes before I stick around in this house. And I was like, all right, dude, I get it. I mean, I just, I just, I wish I knew where he went because I would have went with him. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's tough now being single. It's, it's weird because there's, it's tough because there's so many STDs out there nowadays. You don't know where you're getting yourself involved in. All right. You want me to catch you up to speed on the jokes, honey? I had to tell a joke saying I had a girlfriend for the last. And now we're going back to reality where I'm alone and sad. Okay. How long have we known each other for? I still have two of cats. Where were you during that joke? <laughs> it's it's the participation of oh, they were being mean? Yes. All right, let's go get the teacher. They're mad I have four cats. No one's mad about it. Everyone's just really sad. <laughs> all right, all right. Back to the jokes. Back to the comedy. Okay. All right, so yes, yeah, it's, it's really scary because there's so many STDs out there, and you just don't know why you're getting yourself wrapped in. Like, uh, I was talking to this one girl, and she starts telling me, all these crazy places she's had sex, all these like dirty places. She's like, I've had sex in that alley. I've had sex behind a dumpster. I've had sex in an IHOP bathroom. You don't know what IHOP is? I'm talking to you way too much, okay? I gotta get over here. This is a participatory. So, but you know how women are. Like in the middle of the conversation, she gets off topic and she goes, ah, a raccoon bit my finger when I was at work today. Do you think I should get a check? If anything, that raccoon might get want to get himself checked. That's one. one that one was for the ladies. I'm glad you didn't draw my mic. <laughs> yeah, I could do that, people. So, uh, anyways, uh, another story. I was just about to like engage in the act of passionate love making with a woman. And uh, she leaned over and whispered in my ear, I should probably tell you, I have herpes. And I didn't like jump up because I didn't want to like freak around, you know? So I just like leaned over and I whispered in her ear. I was like, I should probably tell you, you're gonna die alone. <laughs> Does that make you guys sad? Yeah. Well, you want to write them a get well soon card or what? <laughs> you, you know, I don't want to give off the wrong impression though. Like, I can be a very kinky in individual. You know, <laughs> like, uh, I've actually been in an orgy before. Yeah. And by orgy. I mean, I got lost in a hall of mirrors. <laughs> and I jerked off for about 20 minutes until so someone found me. <laughs> That's illegal. Thank you. Thank you. My lawyer, everybody. Thank you very much. I'm good up for my lawyer. He's like, don't incriminate yourself when you do your stand up for laughs. You know, I'll, I have this one friend. Who says, you know what? If you have such a problem with girls, why don't you try being gay? Like, why don't you just give it a try? This does not work out. And I was like, all right, friend that explores his options, let me tell you why. I couldn't be gay. I just, I couldn't do it because, most importantly, if my dad was ever to find out I was gay, he'd be all over me. All right, guys, I am Jim Gray. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. Let's get all the comedians up here. Let's get all the comedians up here. I'd like all the comedians up here. All the comedians up here on stage.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for all the comedians you've seen tonight. Thank you so much. One more time. Am I, am I the only one that can't grow facial hair? <laughs> no, you can. You just haven't tried hard enough. It takes a lot of effort to grow some facial hair. Let me tell you, I've waited months. Sat on my ass and not shaved. It happens. It'll come. Yeah, let's give it up for Forte for having us having this wonderful event. This is amazing. We'd love to be back. Thank you, Paul Clemente, for the speaker system. Yeah, thank you, Paul Clemente, for the speaker system. Let's, let's thank Dan Davis for joining us on this wonderful evening. Yeah, he came in in a pinch and he did wonderful. Tip your bartenders, they were great. The, the bartenders are great. Let's give it up for Karate Sleepover, Jamestown's local comedy group. And give it up for yourselves. Alright? You guys make this happen. We wouldn't be comedians if we had someone to laugh at our pathetic lives. That shouldn't have been the loudest clapping. <laughs> By the way. Yeah, fine, yeah, I, like I kind of agree with it. <laughs> well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Have a wonderful evening. Tip your bartenders. Eat some food. Have a good night. Did someone call an 